Okay, so welcome uh, to this live session on electronic waste management. So as you know, this, uh, this is a four week course, so we will have only one live session, which is uh, this uh, present one. And I hope that more of uh, you will take advantage of it. So the format, usually the way we follow these live sessions, some of you have taken NPTEL courses before, you might be aware. Uh, usually we go over some of the questions uh, that has been already posted. You have been uh, given a, uh, I think, a Google link uh, to post uh, your questions. So we have compiled those questions. There are not too many, uh, but we have those list of those questions. So we'll go over that one by one. Meanwhile, if you have questions, type it in uh, using the chat box and we'll be answering them uh, as it comes. And uh, if, we, if the time permits, some of the common uh, questions that were asked during the discussion forum over the last four or five weeks, we'll try to look at that as well, if needed, uh, and uh, if, uh, if, if the time permits. So let's uh, get started, and uh, we'll see the first uh, for the questions that has come uh, in, in for this uh, particular live session. So first question is from uh, Rudri J. Vaidya, and uh, it looks like uh, the person is from Surat, uh, Gujarat. And the question is, in our city, Surat, uh, at sanitary solid waste management site, there is an issue of rack pickers entering illegally at the site at night and is stalling uh, recyclable waste. Uh, so to stop it, uh, the government agencies are actually burning uh, the waste. Uh, so the question is, if there is some solution to that problem uh, in terms of some technical intervention so that uh, if they, they don't have to burn, basically. So as the question is uh, not related to e-waste management, although this course is on e-waste management, but I will answer this question anyway because uh, we do, uh, like my area is on waste management and uh, some of you may have taken that uh, integrated waste management course uh, which was offered already two times and it offers in the other semester, so it offers in July. So we had it last two years in July and probably we'll have it again uh, this coming July. So uh, burning of waste is totally no-no. Uh, it's uh, we should not burn the waste, especially burning something containing plastic is very harmful because plastic creates uh, dioxins, furans, and then you have the particulate matter and other uh, air pollution issues that are coming out of it. Uh, we get a lot of issues of uh, garbage burning. Uh, recently in uh, Kolkata city, uh, we have the existing landfill. Uh, it, if you had look, looked at the newspaper, it, a lot of news came uh, last month, early last month, where every day there was news on uh, the landfill is on fire. Or uh, similarly, we have uh, landfill fires happening in other many parts in India, also in abroad. It's not only happens in India, it happens abroad as well. Methane is there, it catches fire in the flammability range. In, uh, but sometimes we do put fire on purpose as uh, is suggested uh, in this case of Surat. I'm a bit surprised by uh, I'm not sure uh, uh, because it says that uh, it is being put on fire by the uh, sanitary workers or uh, by the people working for the waste management uh, facilities, which is kind of a little bit uh, surprising because they should not do it. It's not allowed. It's illegal. Uh, it's uh, as per the government norms. They should not do that. So in terms of how to put that, uh, the easiest solution is to put a uh, fence around it, put some security there, which most of the landfills does uh, around the world. The landfill areas are secured. Our waste management rules require the landfill area to be secured as well. So if you put some fencing around, good fencing, working fencing, even the, uh, the steel wire ones, and uh, have some security there, so that will help uh, prevent it. And at the same time, uh, if uh, Surat uh, is working on improving their solid waste management system, actually Surat is doing quite well based on what we see on uh, newspaper reports and other reports. So if uh, the most of the recyclables should not really end up at the dump site anyway. So, but if they are ending up, uh, the easiest solution will be to put a fence around. There is no technical solution for stealing, basically, other than just putting a fence and putting some security. So that's the only thing you can do. Uh, other things would be to have a, uh, as soon as the waste comes in, you have a material recycling facility and try to capture those uh, recyclables as soon as you can and that way, and put it in a secured. Again, you have to secure it. So it's, it's a security issue, it's not a technical issue. So since it's a security issue, it requires a security solution and that would be fencing, uh, putting some uh, uh, like a uh, security people there and keeping an eye on it. So that's the only way you can do it. 
So, the next question is uh, by uh, S. Khare and the question is sir for environmental engineers what are the various domains for research problem in e-waste. Uh, for this course from this course I understand that there is LCA cost benefit analysis impact assessment that can be done for various types of e-waste stream what else can be done. So, uh, so for uh, as Khare the thing is that it, uh, it, it says for environmental engineers. So, since it is an environmental engineering uh, of some of the lists that you have uh, put there of course, they are, they are uh, important and they are important areas, but at the same time depending on uh, your background and interest. So, if you have a strong chemistry background or if your bachelor's degree is in chemical engineering and then you have done masters in environmental engineering or even if from civil background if you have interest in chemistry, uh, there are a lot of work that needs to be done in terms of uh, precious metal recovery recovery of precious metals from electronic waste. If uh, I think we have posted the link uh, as part of the course where you may have seen that in Japan uh, they are going to use recovered uh, precious metal uh, for uh, Olympic medals. So, similarly there are uh, so how to do that and in India we are not doing it very well. So, <coughs> many countries actually uh, globally they just do dismantling they are just doing a little bit of uh, um, uh, so, it is like a segregation of uh, different components and then, then, then they send this precious metal comp uh, component containing precious metal uh, to Japan and some uh, Be Belgium and other, other countries where it gets uh, uh, recovered. So, that is one area if you can uh, if you can come up with technology which is easy and uh, can be used in. Uh, uh, so, we do not have to send it over there we can do it over, over here itself and that will make you money uh, from that project uh, as well. So, other thing is that uh, there is a issue of uh, e-waste uh, management rules implementation that EPR concept these are all new stuff uh, still the governments uh, not only Indian government, but other governments also are struggling to get a wrap around all these regulations how to implement that. So, that policy angle so if in case you are <coughs> excuse me in case you are interested in uh, policy side that is also. Uh, one area you can look at. So, since as you talked about environmental footprint, cost benefit, impact assessment. So, that is kind of looks at from a environmental human health impact, then uh, technology side precious metal recovery, uh, recycling. So, that will be another one then policy side. Uh, so, those are the different things you can do. <coughs> then same person other question is what type of landfill is the e-waste finally disposed of. Um, as you have seen the e-waste management rules uh, in India and similarly e-waste man management rules from the other countries around the world, uh, we do not propose to uh, put e-waste in the landfill. The most of the in fact all the rules that I know of uh, if I have missed some I am uh, you can correct me, but uh, it is all the rules uh, they are focusing on trying to recycle e-waste as much as possible. Whatever the components cannot be recycled only that component should be sent to a landfill which will be a very small part of electronic waste. So, if it has to go to a, a landfill facility as you are asking the question it should go to a lined facility something like municipal solid waste uh, landfill which is uh, sanitary landfill engineered landfill not the dump site uh, where it can be uh, put uh, uh, because it will it may have some chemicals uh, which could be of concern. So, we need to put it in place where if the leachate gets those chemicals it can be treated. So, it should be in a secured engineered sanitary landfill. If we have something which of a uh, lot of nasty material there it can be sent to hazardous waste landfill as well, but that is will be pretty low um, uh, most of it will go to a uh, engineered sanitary municipal solid waste landfill, but again it is not promoted uh, e-waste should be recycled as much as possible should not be sent to an uh, landfill. Now, third question by the same uh, person is in which areas of India can the effects of e-waste pollution be felt the most. Uh, if you look at that is very difficult to say uh, one the, the way we can uh, try to answer this question is to look at in which parts of India we see the most of e-waste being produced or most of electronics being used. So, if you look at from uh, the class material that we had posted uh, the videos that we have uh, gone through in this particular course you know that Maharashtra 
and uh, southern part of India, Delhi, NCR region. So those are the areas where we saw a good amount of electronic products being used and good amount of e-waste being produced. So that will be the area where you will see most of the impact if it's not managed because the e-waste will not travel a lot. Uh, it will, uh, and most of these big cities, outskirts of big cities, you will see a lot of informal recycling happening, which we talked about in the class as well. So those are the places you will see the most impact uh, uh, happening. Uh, and depending on how the, the local government regulations are working, some place may be more, some place may be less. But that's where you will see those will probably be the what we call hot spots in terms of e-waste uh, effect. And uh, next question by the same person is, what is the future of e-waste management in India and abroad? with respect to the work for an environmental engineer. So I understand like uh, uh, most of us are uh, always look well worried about the job. So in terms of e-waste management in India as well as in abroad, uh, see the, there is there is a lot of a lot of opportunities there. Thing is that it is a bit slow on ground the way things are moving. Uh, things are not moving as fast as I would hope it to move but it's not that it's not moving at all as well. So in terms of e-waste, future of e-waste management in India, we have to set up uh, the e-waste management facility. We do have, uh, you saw that uh, lecture material where we introduce you to several companies. And since this is a rerun of the course, the companies that you saw was actually what we were there in the last year. And there may be some new companies have been added this year as well. So, and could be that some of the companies in the last year does not exist anymore, that is also possible. But uh, it's, but there are companies out there, there are companies out there, they are struggling to get uh, e-waste because most of it goes to the informal sector. So once the government regulation really kicks in, once we have this collection center systems working, when the waste really comes into the formal sector in terms of management, which if I, if you remember from the video, I think I have uh, told again and again that we have to have kind of a nice marriage between the informal and formal sector, where the informal sector does the collection and the formal sector does most of the treatment uh, and uh, recycling and disposal. So, so based on that, there are there will be a lot of e-waste being produced. Uh, People buy a lot of phones, uh, just uh, uh, people buy a lot of laptops, so there will be things do go, go obsolete. Uh, newer model comes very fast these days and uh, affordability have gone up. So in terms of e-waste uh, being produced, you will see a lot of being produced. Requirement of uh, recovery for material from e-waste is also very high. So there is a market out there. There are jobs uh, in this area, thing is that things are not things are a bit slow because of uh, uh, implementation of policy and all that. That's where uh, we need to speed up and uh, many times these are kind of beyond the control of people like you and me. It, uh, you, you, the regulations, the bureaucracy and the government and those things have to really get started. But we have to keep working on it. So I would say that uh, future is there uh, for an environmental engineer. but. Uh, as of today, if you are looking for a job, say tomorrow, you are going for a job, just e-waste management uh, jobs may be a bit limited. So you need to be a bit diversified as well, uh, where the e-waste is one of your portfolio uh, in, your, uh, in your CV, but there are other things there as well. So in general, waste management and then e-waste being a specialization uh, because you have taken this course or you have taken done some projects. So that uh, gives you an uh, in avenue to work in the e-waste sector. So that's kind of answers the question of uh, S. Khare. Then uh, we have Mr. Pradeep uh, Kumawat. Uh, his question is, I could not, we could not really understand. There's only three phrase. It says for industrial training. So if you are online right now, I would uh, encourage you to put your questions in more elaborate way as you saw the other questions. Uh, but uh, we'll answer your question based on what we understood uh, what you are asking. But uh, you have the option of asking this question again uh, through the online uh, uh, chat right now. So I, I understand that you're asking that where you can go for industrial training. Uh, you saw that list of e-waste management companies. And I think we have given their, their available on Google. You go on Google, put their name, you find their list, they find their contact information. Many of them have those contact forms these days, which you can fill online. So you can just fill those up, contact them, and uh, you can do internship over there for industrial training. And uh, so that's uh, in terms of company. Uh, for policy, of course, you need to talk to uh, 
uh, State Pollution Control Board and Central Pollution Control Board and work with them on the policy side if you want to. And if you want to do research, uh, it's not industrial training, but if you want to research research training, you can always approach some uh, universities and IITs, NITs where people are working on this area where if somebody, some work is going on, you can become part of that project and do those uh, training. So I understand uh, uh, the way I understood this question is you are looking for a summer training or summer uh, like a summer project uh, for this or maybe a semester project. Then we have uh, Rajendra Prashad P uh, talks about how to question is how to get the profit from e-waste management. As I said, uh, uh, the profit, the real profit is there in the precious metal recovery, which uh, just few questions back I was uh, referring to. So if you can come up with this precious metal recovery, just taking the EUS and dismantling and putting into different parts, many companies are doing it already. But if you can go all the way to the precious metal recovery and uh, put a company in India in that uh, where you can recover all these precious metals, gold, silver and all those other metals there, that will make you a lot of money. And uh, that's where uh, we need to really focus on if you are thinking about uh, setting up a company and all that. Again, there are challenges in terms of informal sector because the uh, thing is that as we talk about in the class video as well, uh, e-waste, we expect whenever we dispose e-waste, we expect a money back from whoever takes it from us. And uh, the thing is that the informal sector doesn't have to follow any government rules. So they they are doing it in a very uh, informal way, that's what they are called informal sector. They are polluting a lot of environment that cannot be done by a company. So company which has put a money, they have put a research, they have put all those equipment out there, they cannot really pay you uh, for, to take your waste. Uh, as I say in the videos in the class lecture that if you are in US or Canada, you actually pay for disposal. Like when you buy a laptop in Canada, you pay around 30, 40 dollars extra uh, for what is known as the e-waste disposal fee. So similarly, you need to uh, think about that. But yes, there are uh, profit, most of the profit is there in the precious metal recovery. Then there is uh, uh, Lahoria Puya from the question, does not say anything, it just says Mizoram. So I, we have no idea what exactly you are trying to ask, but I assume that you are from Mizoram and you might be thinking about the US scenarios over there. So yes, uh, uh, the issue is all it is there. It's a global issue. It's global in the including in uh, Mizoram or uh, other northeast states as well. Uh, the volume is less, population is less in this area, so you see less volume, uh, less uh, stuff going on. But still, the problem is uh, there in other uh, other states uh, too. <coughs> But if you have any specific question, please post, put it on uh, that uh, chat box right now so that I can answer your questions properly. Then we have uh, M. Chitra Devi. Uh, she has a very general question which I think I do not know whether I am a qualified person to answer. Uh, but uh, she has a question on what is the use of these NPTEL codes. So that I think should be answered by our uh, NPTEL office uh, from Chennai. Uh, but uh, since I offered four courses already on NPTEL. Uh, e-waste management, plastic waste which is a started uh, with, uh, is this semester, then if, uh, there was a course on life cycle analysis, sustainable engineering and course on integrated waste management. So what I understand in terms of the use of these NPTEL courses is to help uh, uh, students, help professionals, helps Indian citizens in general to learn more about the topic of their interest and you can learn it at your own time and there are weekly quizzes which here you are assessed. So it's not a f like a free ride, you are not getting a free certificate, you have to really work hard to earn it. But at the same time, if you are interested, if you want to learn something new, that resource is available, Government of India is paying for that. So, and so it's, a, it's being paid from taxpayers money, the income tax or, or whatever tax you and I are paying. So it is not a free, it's actually, we, it may, you may think it's a free, but you are paying for each one of Indian citizens are paying it one way or the other. So, so this resource has been made available uh, uh, by, through this NPTEL program by Ministry of Human Resources and Development for helping uh, uh, students uh, as well as professionals and whoever is interested. Like uh, I had one, in my, one of my course, there was a police officer who took this course. He was already working in as a police uh, uh, in Kerala for almost 10 years, but he was interested, so he took that course. So there might be a lot of students like that. I just happened to meet that person so that I know. So I'm pretty sure that a lot of people take this kind of course just to keep up uh, with the new stuff what is happening. So that's what the whole uh, goal based on what I understand uh, for the four courses that I have offered on this platform. <coughs> so last question among this list is, uh, 
I think that is a model of a uh, request and suggestions. Uh, we are asking for solving more problems uh, in terms of the uh, question. So, in terms of uh, uh, those uh, uh, problems, yes, uh, we have the tutorial session, uh, which you may have a chance to look at the tutorial videos, uh, which is uh, already, which kind of goes over the problems only. Then there were certain problems as part of the course material on the lecture videos, and uh, there was separate video on tutorials, which just gone on problems. Then as you know e waste uh, there is there is no like like a book where you can find some problems and solve them. So, but we have tried to put some problems together and at the same time uh, and uh, we also uh, in, uh, encourage you to look at for example, those risk assessment chapter and other uh, stuff which is kind of general not only directly related to e waste. Uh, there are uh, there is a book by Gilbert Masters and uh, we will put the details of that book on uh, on our uh, discussion forum for this particular course. So, you can look at uh, the solved examples as well as the uh, problem sets at the end of the chapter. So, we will even put the chapter numbers there. So, which chapter number and which chapter you should look at uh, for this e-waste course. So, that way you can practice some more and while you are practicing if you have questions you put it on the discussion forum and we will try to answer that. So, that is way we can help you uh, with that. Since it is only a 4 week there is only uh, certain things we can do. So, it is a, it's a uh, if had it been a bigger course we could have probably added some more uh, uh, stuff in there. Now, <coughs> so the new the newer questions uh, that are coming in now uh, which is the first question uh, from uh, Ramana Bhopala Reddy. Uh, question is every year in India so much of e waste generated, but very few firms are there to recycle. Why India importing e waste from other countries? So, Again, I think uh, part of it was discussed in the lecture video, uh, if you have, uh, but uh, I will repeat it again here. So, we do generate a lot of e waste, and uh, which you saw, like uh, the projections are also pretty high. Our population, we are the second most populous country in the world, and uh, our middle class is now uh, more population wise, we are more uh, uh, compared to United States population. So, affordability has gone up, people are buying a lot of electronics, and people are throwing away a lot of electronics and that is why we are producing lot of e-waste. So, and there are very few firms are out there, uh, yes and no, uh, yes because yes you are correct based on the volume that we generate we do not have uh, uh, that many firms out there which can manage all those waste, but no because uh, even the firms which are out there they are not able to uh, treat the waste as per their capacity because they are not getting the garbage. 90 percent more than 90 percent of the e waste is actually going to informal sector. So, that is where uh, that is why it is although these companies are out there most of the companies you visit we have given you the list of those companies based on where you are located. If you go to that particular uh, company nearby your place and talk to them they will tell you that um, they actually struggle to meet the capacity because uh, most of waste is going to the informal sector and uh, they are not able to compete with the for informal sector in terms of paying the uh, waste producer the amount of rupees that we expect. Say, if I have an old uh, phone, I expect 500 rupees or 1000 rupees or 1500 rupees and these companies cannot pay just as I said few minutes back, because this company has invested a lot of money in uh, setting up all those factories and other stuff. With informal sector, they have not put all those money. So, the, it, they have to run this company, the company is run by qualified people and they have to pay salary. So, it is that is why they are not able to compete. So, that is uh, the firms are there, they are not meeting to target, yes if we should have more firms, but at least let us first meet uh, the targets of the present firms we met, then we can have more firms, because there would, when there would be demand, there would be more supply. And why importing e waste from other countries, uh, that is again a very tricky question, which we discussed in the class. And uh, we are illeg legally we are not supposed to import whatever the e waste comes to India is through basically illegal means. Most of it comes as a form of charity or form of recycling, which uh, even for many many of these e waste comes which are supposed to be an old uh, electronics for some poor families or poor villages in certain parts of India, but when it comes here out of 100 units 50 60 units are actually totally bad they are essentially e waste only 35 40 units are working. So, that is how it gets into the country. So, it is not, it is we should not just blame the western world which are sending those e-waste, it is also our own people who are expecting those e-waste, because they are all they already know it is a nexus uh, through which this e-waste is coming and there is an informal sector which, which uh, is processing those e-waste 
and uh, trying to make whatever the little money they can make out of that. Uh, we have to look at their livelihood too, but not at the cost of the environment. So we have to kind of, that's a tricky area, but needs to be worked on in terms of, uh, so why India importing? Legally, the India is not importing US, but it is coming mostly through illegal way. Rajendra Prashad P, I started e-waste in my hometown, Guntur, Andhra Pradesh from 2017. I have got very less response from the neighbors and friends. So how to make it profitable business with low investment? Ah, it's a very uh, tough question for a person like me. I'm a civil slash environmental engineer who, work, who is uh, uh, doing some research on e-waste management and teaching courses on e-waste management. I'm not a business person. So I don't really know how, how to make it profitable. Uh, you probably need to talk to some entrepreneurship guy uh, to get you a real answer. Uh, but only thing, as I said, just now, as I said, it's, uh, it's just a question of mindset. You, you yourself is kind of uh, uh, giving the answer that what I was trying to give in the previous question, that we, there is very less response from the neighbors and friends because they want money. Because when you set up your e-waste uh, uh, facility, you invested some more. Mr. Rajendra Prashad, you put some money there. But uh, now you need to recover that money, isn't it? Then only you can make profit. Well, business means that you have to at least recover the money. You have also have to eat. But your friends and neighbors, they want uh, 500 rupees, 1000 rupees from that old phone, old uh, mobile or old uh, electronics, which you are not in a position to pay because you, you already are kind of in water in terms of uh, uh, the, uh, the investment that you have done. So <coughs> informal sector, they can do that. They can uh, probably because they don't they don't have, they have not made any investment they will just put it on Aquarasia and all those things which we talked about in the class, so that's that's the problem is there. But once uh, in terms of how to make it more profitable, I would uh, there was, I'm not I was not joking. I'm uh, very seriously. I'm saying you need to talk to some business people to get the advice on that. Only advice, only uh, uh, silver lining I can tell you is that once more and more uh, more and more cities get into implementation of e-waste rule people like you will make profit in e-waste management because once this uh, it will become Ill, total, it is illegal but once it's enforced that e-waste has to go through the collection center should not go to this informal sector which manages it in a very crude way once it goes through an authorized route then you will, people like you, uh, I, which I would really command people like you that you are coming and setting up business in this area. It's a bit challenging area, but be there, don't give up and uh, you will, uh, from a uh, few years down the line, I hope once this regulation is more uh, applied, you will be able to start uh, making profit. But of course, you should also talk to some business people for that. Uh, Tara Chandra. Panjiyar, uh, question is, can you say the purpose of conducting life cycle assessment? So very good question. Uh, LCA, life cycle assessment is essentially an environmental accounting exercise, which uh, I think we mentioned that in the class as well. It's so basically say if you have two products, two uh, systems, two industrial processes, you want to compare which one is environmentally better. When I say environmentally better, which has the lesser environmental footprint. So we just cannot say it, say that saying is the qualitative part, but we need to quantify. So quantification is done by using a tool of LCA. So life cycle analysis is essentially just a tool to tell you that if I have, say if I have these two markers here, which are uh, actually they are identical, they are similar, but say if they are from two different companies, so and they do the same function, they have to do the same function. If uh, I would request you to go and look at that video again to understand what is function and functional unit and all that, if you have uh, not got it, you see the video again, you should be able to get it. But if they pro provide same function, I want to know which one is environmentally better, which one has a lesser footprint on environment, I can do LCA to find out. So that helps and this is a simple example for two markers. Similarly, it can be for uh, a industrial process, it could be a city waste management system, it could be a precious metal recovery process A versus process B for electronic waste. So all those things can be compared and that's why you do LCA, life cycle assessment. And uh, we do have a course on LCA on, uh, uh, on uh, NPTEL which uh, ran two times already. I think it will run again in future. So you should uh, want to take that course as well. It will help you if you are interested in that area. <coughs> um, Malai Goyal, uh, he is, uh, I think he's from Noida area. He says, I talked to Atero Noida a few months back. Uh, they do not collect from societies as of today. How should we go about uh, 
eight few steps initial five in which I, I as an individual can take to bring EUS to Atero. See if you go there I do not uh, again uh, if there, there has to be uh, you need to talk to Atero to find out uh, they are not collecting from societies, but they might be say if you go and drop it off they should be able to take it. So, if there is a if there are a collection center nearby for Atero, Noid, Atero uh, company where you can go and drop off your e-waste they should uh, uh, as per the rule they should they are supposed to take it or at their facility itself they should be able to take it of course, you have to drive it and drop it there. So, so when you say few steps of course, uh, just going by yourself on one cell phone does not make really sense. So, you need to identify the collection center for Atero company near your area call them if they come to your uh, society great you can organize if you are a society uh, office bearer you can organize a e-waste collection event on a one particular day. So, that this Atero guy the collection center guy whoever comes uh, does not uh, has sufficient mass because they will come in a small vehicle and other stuff. So, they also need to uh, not burn up too much gas too much petrol and not get enough uh, electronics. So, you can have a society e-waste collection day where you get everything collected by the authorized collection vehicle from through Atoro, Atoro may be getting it through the collection vehicle. So, whoever is doing it may not be directly Atoro it would be some other companies which has have arrangement with Atoro recycling. If not then you can do your own uh, e-waste recycling collection event in your society and then take that uh, in that vehicle to uh, the Atoro plant. The thing is that people will expect you to pay them some money. Now, <laughs> how will you manage it that is the million dollar question. So, we do not know that uh, it is uh, because that is where uh, things get stuck, but that is what you need to kind of go about it. And as people will understand since you have taken this course you can try to show them some uh, videos, some lectures, some slides and other stuff to educate them that hey just few few hundred rupees does not make a much of a deal if you do not handle it properly it ends up making us sick and then we end up spending lot more money in on the hospitals in the medical bill as individually and as a country as well. So, that is where uh, they need to really focus on. Now, here two gentlemen uh, Vaibhav and Sandeep uh, Bagwil uh, sir may I know is there any firm in India to recover gold and silver from e west. I do not know any firm in India which recovers gold and silver from e west. Uh, there are uh, informal recyclers who do that, but I will not call them firms. Uh, if you go outskirts of Delhi, Bombay, even Kolkata and other places there are informal recycling happening where they take this uh, we talked about that in the class they take uh, uh, chips and other stuff this uh, printed wire board and other stuff which contains this precious metal and they use aqua regia and other extraction method to extract these, but uh, that is not a firm that is a uh, informal recycling with lots of environmental damage environmental and human health damage to those workers as well. But uh, as a firm as a registered firm I am not aware of any, uh, but there might be some out there which has come up very recently which I am not aware, but I do not think there is any because I try to keep an eye on these kind of stuff uh, through news and magazines and other stuff. So, there is no right now we end up sending most of our stuff uh, uh, to Belgium, uh, to Japan, Mitsubishi uh, where uh, people uh, send it to there. Even Australia uh, does, does not have much, Australia also uh, sends their stuff to Japan. So, <coughs> then I think Rudri uh, Vaidya which had the first uh, question uh, uh, on the solid waste management in Surat. So, our Surat Municipal Corporation already done fencing and guard were there, but this idea is not working recently because some illegal activity if can come some technical suggestion. Uh, unfortunately, uh, what uh, technicals you can one thing you can do is uh, uh, like uh, putting that daily cover on top. So, at the end of the day when the waste is collected you put a daily cover many places in the world they use uh, tarp like tirpal we call it Hindi. So, they will put that uh, thin layer of uh, thing on top and then secure it. So, it becomes difficult for those uh, rack pickers to come and uh, try, try to take those recyclables in the middle of the night. So, and uh, that or you can try to follow what uh, Pune was trying to do earlier where they have uh, put these rack pickers in an associations and then they become kind of uh, waste uh, recyclers for the city of Pune and they also had some issues along with that, but there was those uh, things can be tried. 
there are uh, some NGOs can be involved. So those are there is no really a technical solution for that because it's a stealing problem. How will you have it? Uh, only thing uh, uh, like uh, uh, if you can put a tarp or put a daily cover, something on top, which uh, can happen. But uh, I would uh, uh, like uh, uh, I have not been to Surat. I have been to Surat long time back. But I'm really surprised to see this thing happening in Surat because in my uh, I had an impression that Surat is doing wonderful in terms of waste management, municipal solid waste management. So I'll try to look at it more. Uh, I would uh, you put put a you put this. Uh, I'll we'll try to see if we can find some more ideas and put it on discussion forum. So, but uh, right now I don't think of anything other than uh, trying to secure it, put a put a daily cover, or uh, try to. Uh, get some association with NGOs and other stuff that's because that's not a there is no technical what technical suggestion it can have because it's a stealing problem you can have a material recycling facility but then it can again the stealing can happen from material recycling facility as well so it's a human behavior problem it's uh, it needs a human behavior intervention it's uh, cannot have a technical intervention uh, right now um, so Malay Goel has come back with another question, sir. Through this, though this course is over, but we will be getting responses on our discussion forum till we go for exam. Request your help on this. Yes, uh, we will be looking at discussion forum. Uh, we'll try to do it as frequently as we can. May not be every 24 hours, depending on uh, how it comes. But definitely, you will get answer. Uh, we'll try to be as quick as possible. And uh, since uh, as after up, up to your exam, so yes, there will be uh, there will be help through discussion forum up to your exam date. <coughs> Doctor C S Ajad, uh, whether U S rule are mandatory to follow? Yes, it has already been uh, uh, like said, it has already been uh, promulgated. So it is uh, yes, it is uh, uh, mandatory to follow. Any state town in India which is following U S E-waste, you mean E-waste practices as per the rule? No one, uh, unfortunately. Same thing even true for, look at the municipal solid waste management rules. Came in 20, 2001. Today we are sitting in 2019. Then it was revised in 2016. There were some amendments in 2018 uh, to E-waste as well. But uh, still we are not following that uh, municipal solid waste management rules in total. Some bits and pieces we are following. Similarly, for e-waste, there are some activities going on in some cities, big cities especially where these recyclers have come up, there are some authorized collection centers have come up. You go to CPCB website, you will find those authorized uh, collection centers names and phone numbers and other stuff who have registered to be authorized collection center. Many of them are not working because they are not, uh, they uh, got uh, registered but again they are not able to get waste uh, because as I said, there is a competition. Uh, not a, I would say that competition is totally in favor of informal sector. So that is where uh, they lose. So unfortunately, Mr. Rajad, Dr. Rajad, uh, we do not have uh, uh, any city in India which follows e-waste management rules in total in, in like 100 percent. Uh, there are some efforts of course going on in many of the big metro uh, cities. Uh, so that is what uh, my answer would be to that question. Uh, C V Sivaram, Sivaram Prashad, can we use e-waste in concrete? Uh, I am not sure uh, because uh, you, I think you cannot because uh, if you look at uh, e-waste, see if you look at the electronic waste, uh, depending on what the product is, uh, whether it is a big TV or a big computer monitor, CPU, mobile phone, uh, other stuff, but things containing electronic chips, you, ha you will dismantle it you will have plastic, you will have glass, you will have metals. So plastic, glass, metals, uh, pl plastic, I do not know whether the, uh, I do not think plastic is used in, con plastic is being used in road construction for asphalt pavements and other stuff, it can go there as well. This plastic from e-waste can go there too. So when we say e-waste management in concrete, I am not worried, I am not thinking about plastic, glass or metals because glass potentially could be used as a, uh, aggregate or something like that for uh, concrete. But I understand that you are talking about that nasty stuff, the printed wire board, whether we can crush that printed wire board and use it. Uh, I would, my answer would be potentially no, because uh, 
it's you should not use it in uh, that's what I would say because it contains as we said it contains a lot of heavy metals it contains certain organic chemicals brominated flame retardants and you don't want they, they have a lot of uh, health effect you saw that in the course videos so you don't want to put it in those concrete they may be they may get immobilized it's correct but once it comes in contact with the water things may leach off and then later on who knows like once you break it down it will get into pieces metals are not going to go anywhere anything on the periodic table doesn't disappear so you will get exposed to it so answer is no it should not be used in concrete uh, uh, I, I, my my uh, answer would be no is there any us collecting company in hyderabad uh, i think it's from, again from cv sibarama prashad uh, you have to search it on uh, uh, on your uh, Telangana uh, State Pollution Control Board website. Uh, I don't uh, I don't know whether there, is, there should be some, uh, but uh, being, uh, but Hyderabad being such a big city, there should be some. But I don't remember anything on the head. We do have uh, if you look at the EUS management rules towards the end. I think there is a list of uh, authorized suppliers and other stuff on the web, so you can find the list from there. But uh, I don't remember. Uh, like I don't. I am. I'm pretty sure there should be one. But I, uh, I cannot give you the name right now. Sandeep uh, Bagul again has a question. Is there any health issue to use electronic equipment after their average life? So I think you're talking about use uh, while we are still using it, rather than uh, before disposing it. Before it becomes an electronic waste. Uh, the answer is no because it is not that uh, uh, like things from old TVs or old computers will start leaching off and getting exposed to me. Like I am using a computer right now and uh, I'm getting projected on a big screen so it is uh, or uh, you are watching it on a on YouTube at your uh, on your laptop or a desktop. It is not that uh, uh, it even if it is a 10 year old laptop or a desktop it is not that it is going to start impacting you. Uh, there could be some of the older computers uh, they do become energy uh, uh, in uh, like uh, their energy uh, efficiency is low because they are older and they uh, traditionally they end up consuming more energy than the newer brands or the newer models but and that may have that energy coming from coal based thermal power plant those of you who took the lca uh, lecture you know uh, lca even in this course that indirectly yes you may have some effect because of that but that's we i don't think that's your question the question is is there any health issue when, when say if you have an older five if the average life is 5 years even after 5 years if you are using your laptop or desktop is there any health effect the answer is no there is no health effect unless you are trying to take it apart and really getting exposed to it trying to take it in your mouth which you will not do even if you take your mouth it will not dissolve in and metals will not come to your mouth you will get some dust particles so, so I think that's uh, uh, th there is no uh, uh, health issue associated with that uh, for a older uh, computer. So, uh, I think that's uh, we are uh, we are still uh, live. If you have uh, any further questions, we will be live for another five ten minutes. So, if you have any questions, please uh, post it, and we'll be try we'll try to answer. So, again, uh, it was a four week course, and as you know, this is a rerun. This course was first offered last year in 2018 this is the second offering of this course in 2019 so the four weeks are over we had a some uh, tutorial videos there as well we have been uh, you should uh, thank the ta who was very very active in the discussion forum to answer all your questions so she did a wonderful job and but at the and we will i will request her to continue to do that while <laughs> the exam period so that you will get the answers as well so but uh, at <coughs> it's a uh, Again, any question you are free to uh, ask uh, and uh, we will be trying to answer to the best of our ability. Many times, many of your questions you guys are asking, it is actually beyond the uh, scope of this particular course. We are trying to answer based on our ability, but uh, say, say like as we are a civil engineering department, environmental engineering program, we are not hardcore metallurgy people, we are not hardcore chemistry people. So many times your questions are well beyond the scope of uh, uh, what uh, I would know. Uh, so, we try to do our research and answer that, uh, but uh, it is if you are doing research in this area, if you are going for a master's thesis or a PhD thesis, this course is just an a starting point. You have to go well beyond this course to really understand the EUST issues. This four week course is just like a curtain raiser. They say in the movie it is like a trailer. So, it is a trailer for EUS management. So, if you are really interested in this field, 
you have to learn a lot things are very the field is very dynamic a lot of things are happening and uh, not in india also globally uh, a lot of new things are happening uh, electronics are also changing uh, newer newer materials are coming to electronics so newer type of contaminants are getting added older contaminants are going away so it's it's a very dynamic area in general waste management is dynamic area it's a very uh, challenging area so e waste in particular is also very challenging area so i would encourage you those of you who want to take a career in this area or sim related to this area uh, work hard learn there are a lot of materials out there we try to cover whatever we could do based on uh, in this four weeks but there are a lot of other materials out there as well you will find united nations website well other uh, gom european union website lot of materials are there so if you are really interested especially those of you want to pursue phd masters or some other uh, career in this particular e waste uh, domain i would strongly encourage to you to look at those uh, stuff uh, so i think uh, thank you uh, unless uh, you have uh, any other questions i think we are not uh, we are not getting any more questions coming in so we'll uh, uh, try to close it in now so thank you uh, many of you had uh, we all answered your questions through the disc uh, whatever you posted on the discussion forum and whatever you asked right now we have uh, been uh, uh, our uh, like this, uh, the discussion forum also we have been responding uh, within 24 hours most of the days so so that's uh, 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 thank you for taking this course uh, i hope you enjoyed this course and those of you who have uh, registered for exam uh, best of luck Uh, i hope uh, you will do good uh, and you should do good if you have done all the assignments and if you have looked at uh, uh, your uh, uh, yeah uh, if you have looked at your uh, uh, the lecture videos carefully uh, tutorial videos so there will be questions will be very like a, there are in terms of uh, nptel exam there are standard formats so for the the type of questions asked in the quiz type of problems we do it uh, in uh, tutorials similar things you will see in the exam so it's not that uh, we are uh, there will be something very surprising in the exam so uh, mr sivarama prashad again came back with another question so is there any case study in india like ghana case study uh, there are case studies in india uh, there are case studies in terms of uh, uh, even if you go on you know, on youtube uh we you will find the case study uh, on uh, that the informal recyclers in and around delhi so the there is a ghana case study there is also a case study i think i mentioned to you in the class uh, that exporting harm which is in uh, uh which is focused in uh, china uh, one of the southern province of china one village similarly there has been a study on health effect of uh, uh, health overall effect of uh, improper e waste management in uh, delhi area in outskirts of delhi so there are uh, studies out there and there might be some others out there as well so these are the some which just came to my uh, mind right now so <coughs> so those things are there uh okay so mr malay goel uh, he is saying basically he is asking me to set up now <laughs> so he says no further question just want to thank as it uh, gives a lot of insight further it is nice to hear you as a very good day with lot of uh, oh lot of joes okay so good uh, i hope uh, it's good mr goel that you enjoyed this course uh, that's what uh, our goal is as a, as a nptel team uh, we try our best uh, it's you see me on the video but there are a lot of people who work for this course it's not only me so there are a lot of people who uh, work behind the scene and uh, so so you should thank all of us and uh, i will convey your message to all our team members as well So there is another course. Uh, so Malay also told me to stop now, but there is another question, so I need to answer that. Uh, that's uh, Rudri Vaidya. What step I should do to make any municipality to set up formal collection center for e-waste center? So it's a see you. You need to just tell them that to follow the rule because if you look at the e-waste management rules, uh, which is uh, which is there, uh, uh, which was uh, implemented uh, uh, like earlier, and then it was again. Uh, Uh, there was uh, uh, amended in 2016 with some modification again in 2018 that uh, they if uh, every every municipality in collaboration with the state pollution control board which in turn with central pollution control board has to set up a collection center for e waste so it's that private parties has to come forward and apply for this collection center licenses 
and uh, so there are certain requirements which is there in the rule. We talked about that I think in our uh, uh, different rules and responsibilities for different stakeholders in U.S. management uh, rule chapter. If you remember, there were a uh, there were some animations as well which were trying to focus on each uh, one of those stakeholders. <coughs> so. Um, so that's that's what uh, you need to tell them that you, you we have to start following the rule. So if you are working for municipal government, uh, you can take uh, uh, be try to force people to do that. Uh, it's again the thing in country like India is we still we are uh, uh, although we we are good middle class, but still we have a lot of problem in terms of uh, uh, trying to feed the poor people. Our economy is going stronger, but we have a lot of hunger is still left in the country. We still have a lot of other issues to be uh, is addressed in the country. So these these kind of issues of waste management or environmental issues, they do get attention from newspaper, media, and other stuff. But that doesn't get really followed on uh, because uh, it requires investment too. These things requires investment. It doesn't come for free. One thing which is little bit of misconception in Indian context, which uh, maybe with our bureaucrats, politicians and other people, we think that private parties are always there to make money and they make a lot of money all the time. Private parties also need hand holding, especially in environmental sector. You look at US, you look at Canada, you look at Europe, all those countries, they are, they are so called capitalist countries. They have really helped these private companies to establish the business in the US, in the environmental sector in general. And they require help in the beginning because it's not profitable business. Uh, waste management is, people may call it waste to wealth, waste to gold, whatever. But unfortunately, it is not waste to wealth or waste to gold. Uh, unless you invest it, your, uh, your systems mature, it goes to a certain level. And then it becomes, you can start making revenue. So in the initial period, the private parties, unless they are a very big company like waste management or some, even in Indian context, we have Jindal doing some waste to energy plants and there are some other big companies like Ramkey, but Ramkey also had a struggle some other, some places. So, but uh, <coughs> then it may work, but for a smaller companies, it's, it doesn't work. So government hand holding is needed, which uh, and uh, government has to bring all the stakeholders together to make really work. But we are really afraid when we talk about government, we feel like corruption will come in. So that's where uh, we need to have a check. But uh, that's what uh, we, there is a, sometimes it's like a cash 22 solution, who, what will happen first. But things will happen, uh, things are getting better uh, with, uh, as you know, in recent past, we have improved on cleanliness and other stuff. So things will get uh, better. But uh, to what step I should do to make any municipality set up? You have to just go to municipality and tell them your municipal commissioners, your ward commissioners that, hey, we need to follow this e-waste management rules. We are not following in our city. Uh, our college doing project on e-waste management, can you guide us? Uh, that, uh, of course, as a, uh, you can contact me. We, we can talk about that offline. We don't have to talk about it online. So we can, uh, uh, we, like if there is something which is of mutual interest, if there is something I can help, I will be always be available to help. So you can easily find me on uh, IIT Kharagpur website. Okay, so let's uh, call it a day as uh, uh, Mr. Malagoel told me to do it around 10 minutes back. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you everyone uh, for uh, uh, coming in today and uh, asking some interesting questions. I hope it helped you and I also hope that this will help the other students who are taking this course and maybe other people who may watch this video on YouTube. So again, thanks and uh, take care and uh, those of you who registered for the exam, do well, all the best.